A lot of people are intimidated by the scientific argument against animal experiments. Um, virtually anyone can talk about ethics. Uh, we can show uh, pictures, photographs, videos to the public and shock people because animal experiments are shocking. They are shockingly cruel. Um, but as a veterinary surgeon, I like to talk about the scientific argument. I like to put forward the scientific argument against animal experimentation. And I think, I think ultimately um, we need both the ethical and the scientific argument in order to persuade the public, in order to get the public on our side that animal experimentation is not only cruel, it also represents bad science. There are two basic arguments, two basic scientific arguments that anybody can use against animal experiments uh, and against animal researchers. The first is that animals and people are biologically very different from each other. Uh, that, that, is, that is painfully obvious. Uh, so anybody can use that argument in a debate situation or a discussion. Um, the second point is that animals at the beginning of the experiment are usually healthy and they are, they are made ill. They are given a disease or they are injured by artificial means. Uh, and that in no way resembles the natural history or the natural course of the disease in people that researchers are trying to mimic in animals. So those, those two arguments are actually very powerful. The fact that animals and people are biologically very different from each other and the fact that animals are healthy at the beginning of the experiment and are made ill or injured by artificial means. About 85% of animal experiments are conducted on rats and mice. Now we are very different from rats and mice. Um, so some scientists will say yes but you know we have a better model than rats and mice, we have chimpanzees. Well indeed we share about 98.4% of our DNA with chimpanzees. And yet that tiny difference, that tiny difference in the DNA between humans and chimpanzees uh, is huge in terms of biological effects because chimpanzees are immune to at least three deadly human diseases including HIV AIDS, hepatitis B and common malaria. Now those three diseases kill millions of people every year. The chimpanzee is immune to those diseases. Animal experimentation is bad science. We want good science. Good science consists of three things. First of all, it must be species specific. Um, you don't test a drug for parrots on racehorses. The second point is that it must do no harm. That means that you cannot use healthy volunteers. Using healthy volunteers is putting healthy people at risk. The third point is that any research should be evidence-based. By evidence-based, we mean that there is hard scientific evidence to show that this treatment actually works. And one of the best tools that we have is what is known as a systematic review. What a systematic review does is it takes the best medical literature um, and it summarizes the results of that research to show that a treatment either works or it doesn't work. Now most of the systematic reviews that have been conducted comparing treatment outcomes in animals and people show a huge discordance between the results obtained in people and in animals. If we want to study human diseases, let's study human tissues, human cells. You will come up against the counter argument that human cells do not represent the whole living organism. Well, that's true, um, but then the whole living rat does not represent the whole living cat or the whole living dog or the whole living human. So, so that, that's an answer to that argument. But we're not just talking about human cells. Okay, that's, that's only the first stage. When we want to find out whether a chemical or a drug can harm humans, we begin with testing on human cells. It is possible today to obtain virtually every single cell type in the human body and experiment on those cells and see how those cells respond and react to a chemical or a drug. Once we've passed the cell stage, we can then go on to cell culture, in other words, groups of cells. The next stage would be, for example, organ slices, slices of kidney tissue, slices of uh, liver, 
in order to represent the interaction between different groups of cells. The stage after that could be, for example, computer modeling. Um, it could be what is known as lab on a chip. Lab on a chip really represents the different compartments in the body. Let's think about if we take a drug, if we swallow a pill, that drug comes into contact first with our stomach. So we can take cells that line the stomach to mimic the stomach. Uh, the next compartment in the lab on a chip would be, for example, blood cells, because that drug would be absorbed through the stomach into the bloodstream. So we could use blood cells in the, in the next compartment. The next compartment would probably be liver cells, because that's where that drug would land. Um, and then perhaps kidney cells. So we're, we're starting to approach the, the whole living system, the complexity of the whole living system. Is it perfect? No, of course it's not perfect. But then in biology, there is no 100% perfect system. But the choice, the choice is between uh, incomplete human data that is relevant to the species in question, in other words, humans, or complete animal data, because we can get complete animal data, but that is irrelevant to the, to the species in question, which is human beings. Okay, so if animal experimentation is, is so bad, people say, well, why does it persist? Why does it persist? Um, there are several answers. I, I will share two of them with you. The first reason that animal experiments persist is that they are based on 50-year-old laws. We have a situation where the laws governing drug testing today are the same laws that were written about 50 years ago. Science has moved forward by 50 years since then, but the laws have not caught up with the science. The second reason that animal experimentation persists is that it is based on 150 year old science. If we look back to the time of Claude Bernard in France, about 150 years ago, he managed to persuade the scientific community at the time that the similarities between animals and people was more important and more significant than the differences between animals and people. And today we know that exactly, it's exactly the other way around. It's the opposite. The differences between animals and people are far more significant. So to sum up, as a veterinary surgeon, but also as a compassionate human being, I'm opposed to all animal experiments on ethical as well as on scientific grounds. Animal experimentation has to be one of the most grotesque errors committed in medical history. And the sooner we realize that error, the better it's going to be, obviously for animals, but also for human health.